Roswell Flight Test Crew, here again taking a look at how you can use drones to make money in agriculture. And we're lucky to have Dr. Gregory Kretzinger here with us again from Scholar Farms. How are you doing, Greg? I'm doing well. It's great to be up in Oregon, and I'm ready to get out in the field and do some mapping. And that's what we're here to do. We're here at the Stoller Family Vineyards, and we're going to go talk to them and see how we can help them with drones. Okay, so I'm here with Jason Tosh, who's the vineyard manager. How are you doing, Jason? I'm good. How are you doing, Patrick? I'm doing outstanding. <laughs> cool. Now, what is it you're hoping that we're going to be able to show you with the drone, and where do you want us to look? The footage you're taking helps show us where some of the weak spots are in our vineyard, where we might be experiencing stressed vines due to the drought season that we're having. Using the imagery that your drone flyover is going to take will help us identify with inside of vineyards without having to kind of assume exactly which plants and vines are stressed out that we can go then and address them with either more irrigation or some compost. Really important stuff for helping us create a nice, even producing quality wine. So is there any particular place within the vineyard you want us to take a look at? I've identified some weak areas inside of a Pinot Gris block uh, just up the hill here, but I haven't really been able to tell precisely what it looks like from the ends of the rows or from the ground level and this is where drones will really help. But why don't I take you out and show you this area and we'll do a drive around the vineyard and I'll show you where we can set up. This is the block right above this oak. Okay. So everything up to the next break that cuts across the top, you yeah, can see this can... is block 12. There, there's some weaker yellower vines kind of right in this section that we need to target. They're, they're a little less vigorous. This year they look pretty good because we cultivated it last year. They were just extraordinarily weak. We've just completed sort of our pre-flight checks of the area. And overall, I like it. I mean, there aren't any above ground utilities, no power lines we're gonna hit. The trees are concentrated in clumps that are going to be easy for us to avoid. And we're in Class G airspace, so no authorization requirements at all, as long as we're operating under Part 107. Now, I know from having flown here in the past, one thing to worry about is there are five little general aviation airports in this vicinity, and so we'll occasionally get low-flying fixed-wing traffic or even lower-flying tourist helicopter traffic. So we'll definitely need to keep an eye open for those. Yeah, and we're mapping fairly small areas, which means we can call the drone home and land fairly quickly if we need to. And then one other thing I think about is, are there people out in these fields? Because we obviously don't want to overfly unprotected people. So you need a plan accordingly. Usually that's touching base with the field managers just to know what the schedule is for the day. All right, and Greg, one more thing to make you aware of. I don't see this being a big issue for us today, but these vineyards are held up by wires between the posts and if you put enough of those wires in between your control station and your drone, it acts like a Faraday cage and jams up your signals, but good. We're launching from pretty open areas and we'll just be cognizant of any interference that might happen with the drones. Yeah, well, we're flying up high. I don't think it's gonna be an issue. We were getting some pretty video just skimming the tops of the vines and skimming them a little too close. Yeah, so. I could see that being it. So I think we're in the clear, let's go flying. All right, let's get it on. Here, I'll give you, oh, you got a lot of batteries. the controller. All right, sounds good. And I'll get the aircraft ready to go. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Okay. Recording started and then recording started. Okay, good. I get way up there. Keep going to like 300 feet. So what it's going to do is basically think of it like a trail of where it's flying. And this will be what's on the split screen and then a trail on a map next to it. So it'll yeah. be really nice for them to be like, oh, pause the video right there. And that way they can kind of, it's video scouting, basically. It's super easy to do. You're just starting your transects. It'll save it. All right, I'm gonna go to the road and then I'll turn around and come back. Yeah, that sounds great. Slide laterally? Yeah, you can do that. And maybe turn it back around to do an S shape once you're kind of down the road a little bit. I'm gonna square up to that road. Manually. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Now just come back. Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. Huh? You want no more than maybe six or eight minutes of video for this particular app. There you go. Keep it. Keep essing it back is fine. It'll it'll look pretty good. Well, you know. Okay. So now we're using the Hangar 360 app. And this is going to program the drone to take a 360, so take the images around, tilt the gimbal, take the images, point it straight down. We're gonna go fly out and get some point counts of 360s across the farm or the field. 
and when it comes back, then we'll land and we'll transfer all the imagery to the phone. Okay. So you're good to go. Everything looks good. Go ahead and take off. I, well, before I do that, it's, just, it's interesting to think that this has some real world application. I always thought this was, you know, for getting cool vacation shots to make your friends jealous. Yeah. But there's I mean, a real use to there's this. There's a real use to it. And it's really to give someone an interactive product that they can drag around and see in the field. And I think it's quick. It's a free app and it's something that anybody can do. And then you can quickly upload the data to the cloud and then send a link to somebody and they can look at their own field and see where the photos were taken and, and what it looks like. Right now it's configuring the camera and it should do about 25 frames. There you go. Yeah, no, I can see it queuing itself up taking photos. And what I didn't expect, I mean, I, I've never used this before. I'm strictly a silk scarf guy. I fly the drone, all right. this autonomous stuff is pretty new to me. But so one thing I didn't anticipate is it's actually looking up at the sky. So it's going to give us, I mean, that's irrelevant for our current purposes, but it is going to make it a pretty cool panorama. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty cool panel. The other nice thing is you can get the embed code. You could put this directly into your website. You could deliver it. We can deliver it just to a link to the customer while we're still out in the field. There's a lot of different ways to use this as a deliverable. And right now we're at frame 18. Uh, we just got a couple of them left and we're good to go. So you can see we're capturing just a whole amazing view and we'll do another one too so you can capture multiple on a battery come back and land and you'll have your data products we're gonna start looking at some of the data we'll start with the visible light data that we collected earlier today this is a software called hangar and you can use an app in the field to fly the drone and it will take 360 panoramic so it takes images around and then the gimbal the the wow. camera gimbal points down and changes the angle and then it'll process those together and then the pins will show up on these maps and it's looking at um, a satellite view as well and then you'll see where those pins are located we flew at about 350 feet above wow. the fields mm -hmm. and then we can just click on those and this is all in the cloud so it's very easy to share these Amazing. you can embed it in the website we'll get you all of the links and to embed for marketing it's basically google street view right and then we can just pan around and this was that wow. that kind of block that we were yeah. looking at before what i really like about this data product is one it takes about two minutes to collect um, and you can do multiples on a battery which means you could have these pinpoints across all your fields uh, in a you know a couple hours but then it allows you to just really spot check uh, different areas and locations Look so at the detail it's yeah, amazing. and you can zoom in too and just really see. And this is a 12 megapixel Mavic camera. If you had the Phantom 4 Pro out here, it would be a 20 megapixel, so almost twice the amount of detail. You can see individual vines with this image. Yeah, and you can zoom in very easily. Um, on the phone, it's pretty cool because you can spin around, move the phone, and it's like you're just moving it along oh, that's incredible. The, the panoramic. So this is that soil, yeah, these kind of soil that ridge drainages line. that you, you can see. just basically follow that ridge yeah. line. Yeah. See the weak spots there. Yeah, we've always wondered how much in depth and really be nice to figure out how, how much area that takes up. We'll be able to get that in some of the map data, which will be a little more quantitative. Mm -hmm. uh, what I think these are really nice for is just spot checking, rapid yeah. spot checks of your field. Like it. You don't have to be super trained. It automatically mm -hmm. processes and it's just an intuitive way to interact. And then you can quickly share this with anybody um, over text even. And that way, if you have a technician or someone mm -hmm. out in the field, they can mm -hmm. just say, hey, check out this. Here's a new Here's, spot, spot of the, you know. The, right. You've got lush, you know, well-watered, well-nourished vines next to these weak spots. And what does that mean? Typically that's a, a shallow soils or very quickly drying soil types. You're seeing the soil variation play out in this block that I always thought was fairly homogenous, but having this 300 foot aerial view in the detail that we see, we can really get into the fine tune, just from a visual standpoint, areas that we need to address or at least start looking into. This software called Survey, what this does is it syncs the flight log from the drone so you can show where the drone flew Amazing. with the timestamp on the video. So I can geo-reference the video. So even though it took, it took about two minutes to fly this, uh, it's, it's about a gig of 4K video. The nice thing about this software <laughs> is that it geo-references it. Um, and right now I'm in 1080p, but mm -hmm. I, we could get up to 4K. What I think of this is just aerial scouting. Yeah. And so you could fly the entire vineyard in about 10 minutes or so, and you would get kind of flight lines across it. Um, but similar to the 360, you can pause at target areas and you would know exactly where it's at within the block Amazing. as well. 
Um, and, the, and then it gives you d data, GPS data points to yeah, so you track can, yourself. You can pull out uh, the data points. I also have, if we look back at this map, you'll see all the areas that I flew. So mm -hmm. if you had multiple vineyards or multiple fields mm -hmm. or you're managing uh, lots of different areas, they can sh you can manage all the different pinpoints. Um, the nice thing about this software is I can upload single image photos. Oh, wow. So you can see the actual photo. We can put in panoramic, similar to what you saw before. We can put in video. So again, not super quantitative, mm -hmm. um, but just very quick and rapid um, data for just kind of situational awareness right, of your right. fields. So that's really what I had for the RGB for now. I, I think that that's kind of the quick scouting of today. And then tomorrow we can process the maps and we can have the real map layers together. And that's really what you would use for like a geospatial that's software. Right. So that's the end of our first day out here in the field, learning how you can use drones to make money helping agriculture. In our next video, we're gonna take a look at using multispectral imaging to tell even more about plant health. And I wanna be sure to especially thank Greg Kretzinger of Scholar Farms. And if you wanna take his masterclass to learn more about this, be sure to use the link in the description below. Well, thanks so much for having us out. We really appreciate it, Jason. And I wanna give each of you a Roswell Flight oh, Test man. Crew shoulder pad. I have officially arrived in the drone world. This is excellent. <laughs> all right, so it has been 100 degrees out here all day. I've had enough. Guys, let's get out of here. Let's, let's get out. <laughs> take care and fly safe.